Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Purpose Jam Live Sports, and I'm back here for another NBA video. It's been a while, but I'm back. So, over the weekend, we saw both Game 3s from the Warriors and Blazers series and the Bucks and Raptors series. Game 3, Warriors and Blazers. Now, I'm also going to give you guys a preview of tonight's game. So, Warriors, once again, down 13. I think they're down 13 at halftime. Another game where Portland came out and played exceptional. And then, third quarter comes, Warriors come out and play. And what it really was is that, you know, you could say, you, I, I really can say that the Blazers were the better team in the in the first half of both games, game two and game three. Then the second half comes in. It seems like a championship uh, experience for the Warriors just, really takes over and they just they turn it up to another level where they just they play better and really Draymond Green to me has just really been the catalyst for all this you could say it's Steph Curry who's averaged like 36 the past three games but in all honesty it's Draymond Green's play him pushing the tempo him getting rebounds blocking shots getting steals telling people where to be being there in rotations and being there to help to disrupt shots you know him also in rotations it's like if Draymond is not there, they, they they don't win those two games. This this solely is because to me Draymond Green has just been he's really he's really coming into his old form. Just he to me he's a guy who wants to do everything and he's doing it at, at a high level, averaging sixteen points, eleven rebounds, eight assists in the playoffs. He leads the he leads the playoffs in rebounds and blocks. He's playing so exceptional right now. I think it's either rebounds and blocks or I think it might be assist and blocks. Yeah, it might be assist and blocks because I think Giannis is actually leading the, the NBA in rebounds in the playoffs because Giannis is playing exceptional. But we'll talk about that in the, in the next video. But Draymond just, he had a triple-double in game. I think he had a triple-double in game two as well, but I'm for sure it was game three. So him being that catalyst, being able for Stephen Curry and Clay to run off of him, making plays, it's... To me, he's the guy who settles things when things get out of hand. You saw that, especially in the first half when he made the shot to end the half. And it once again, it was midway through the third quarter when they started to get stops. And then in the fourth quarter, they really finished them off when they came all the way back and took the lead. It was Draymond's defense once again, which is why I think he should be a perennial defensive player of the year. And at least a first team all defensive player because to me his defense and him telling people where to be, him being there in rotations, their defense is so much better to me because he knows exactly where to be to tell people where to be. And him just he knows how to play the game and he knows what he just knows all these types of situations. I really don't know what to say about Draymond Green. Now I will say this. Game four in Portland. Everybody, uh, well, not everybody. A lot of people picked Portland to win. I was one of the people who picked Golden State to win because I think they, they, to me, they want to actually sweep this team and get rest. So I will be, I will be picking them again in this game. I will say, Mars Leonard played exceptional for the Blazers in Game Three. I actually expect him to play really well again because he, he offensively, he, he, he provides a challenge for the Warriors because he's seven one. He can actually shoot the three, and to me, he's actually pretty good off the dribble, getting to the rim. Getting post hooks in there, he's a he's a pretty athletic for his size. So that presents a different type of challenge, and he he rebounds pretty well. And because he's so big, he can actually stand there and you know kind of disrupt shots with his size just standing there. But he's not great in rotations, like I have said in previous videos, where he's either over commits and rotates too early, where it leaves his man open at the rim, or he doesn't commit soon enough, where it leaves people open for shots. And you just see that the Blazers want to play him. Terry Stotts wants to play him, but he'd rather play Zach Collins because Zach Collins, to me, is a smarter, a, a smarter player where he kind of he knows situations and how to be there. But I did see once again more breakdowns where guys were letting Steph Curry and Clay come off the screens and shoot open shots, especially three point shots, or they're not defending the pick and roll properly. And to me, it seems that the words are kind of. They've kind of figured it out to where if they're going to come up hard, then they're going to drive. If they're going to sit back, we're going to shoot it. Even if you guys want to switch those and 
you know, do all the little sneaky stuff, then the guy who's screening is going to back cut, like I've talked about. So the Warriors are kind of being, they're showing that little championship mentality, that savviness about them where they know all these situations, they've been in all types of situations, that they know what to do when a certain little, when they have a certain little situation that they're in. Like, let's say you want to double Steph off of screen. Steph Curry's so good at dumping the ball off quickly because he realizes when a screen is there. Some guys, it takes them a... A half of a half of a second more, so then you turn the ball over. But Steph Curry, he's become so good at this because he's trapped a lot. He gets the ball out quicker, so that really helps him. And for the for the Blazers, Dame Lillard, CJ McCollum, they they either start the game off well or they end the game off well. And Dame, to me, he's just been—he's been a little off, and he does have a rib injury that he said he's not going to use an excuse for, but he he does have that rib injury. But to me, he's not making great adjustments to where he's not using great. He's not been bad in the pick and roll, but he's not been great. Hasn't really been able to find his shot. He's missing a lot of shots as well. So, and then in the fourth quarter, CJ McCollum isn't getting enough, getting enough shots to me, and he's not getting shots in rhythm to where he can do something with it. And that's just been a problem for them. So. For the Blazers to really stay competitive and to avoid getting swept, they're going to have to fix that part. And what I mean by that is they've they've got to find more shots in rhythm. And I and to me, what's working is the other guys, the bench players, are getting shots up. Seth Curry's playing well. Rodney Hood is playing well, getting his matchups and doing what he wants. But Zach Collins, to me, has to stay out of foul trouble. And then Dame and CJ, they have to start playing their game better. And... Dame has to really make adjustments and he's just got to really shoot better get to the basket whatever he has to do to get himself in rhythm that's what he has to do because he was getting to the line a lot earlier in game three unfortunately that didn't transpire through the rest of the game because in the second half they kind of disappeared so that is that is kind of weird to me I'm wondering what Dame will do because in order for them to either prolong or even make this a series again, they're going to have to make those adjustments. But I'm picking the Warriors to win this game because I think the Warriors actually want it. And I kind of see, even though they've played a little slackish in the last two games, I think they want this game. I think they really want to sweep. They for sure want to get back to the finals, but they're waiting for Kevin Durant. So them getting extra rest, that helps them tremendously against uh, Toronto or, or Milwaukee. So going to do it for this video i want to thank you guys for listening this is my breakdown and analysis on the warriors and blazers series it's been a it hasn't been i'm going to say it's been a great series because we've seen the blazers compete and actually push the warriors to play at a different level to where warriors have to raise their game even though they're down 3-0 so but i already knew the warriors were going to do something this is not it's not really surprising to me so but Draymond's playing well. I'm truly impressed by him. Steph Curry, he's really stepped up. Clay hasn't shot the ball too well, but to me, he's doing things on the other end of the defensive end that makes up for that. So that's why the Warriors, to me, have been helped by that. Now, Andre Godala, real quick, does have a calf injury or is an, is an Achilles injury. I think his he has a sore Achilles, but I think he'll be fine. He'll probably play less minutes in Game 4. Probably more critical minutes when they need him. So just watch out for that, but... That's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll see you guys in my next video.